Hello, my name is Maria. I'm going to speak about the paper called Analyzing Finite Neural Networks, Can We Trust Neural Tangent Kernel Theory? We have done this work together with Professor Gita Kutinyok, who is my supervisor at LMU Munich. Let me start with defining deep neural networks. We consider fully connected forward networks here. So the architecture of such networks is defined by the number of layers, L, and the widths of these layers, denoted ML. Then a deep neural network uh, is a composition of affin linear functions, parameterized by weights and biases in each layer, and component-wise application of uh, a chosen nonlinear activation function, denoted phi. Deep neural networks are most commonly trained by a variant of gradient descent. Here we will consider gradient flow, which is the limit of gradient descent with the infinitely small step size. This will allow us to write uh, training dynamics of uh, deep neural networks as a differential equation. As you can see in the slide, in gradient flow, the time derivative of trainable parameters, denoted as theta, is equal to the anti-gradient of the loss function. We can also use the chain rule to move from the space of trainable parameters to the space of the output functions of a neural network. Analyzing these dynamics is a big challenge in the theory of deep neural networks because we don't know much about the right-hand side of, the, of these equations. We don't have simple analytical expressions for the gradients in case of neural networks. Therefore, we cannot have any analytical expressions for the output function of a trained neural network and therefore, we don't have any access to important properties of trained neural networks, such as generalization error, model stability, or robustness. It is important to address these challenges to understand deep neural networks, and neural tangent kernel theory does this in the special case of infinitely wide networks. Let me now introduce uh, neural tangent kernel theory. Uh, consider for simplicity that we use squared loss and set the output dimension to 1. Then, writing the gradient flow dynamics again, we can open the gradient of the loss and plugging it into the equation for the output function dynamics, we get the last expression here. Uh, you can see that we have a product of two Jacobians of the output function with respect to the trainable parameters, and we denoted this product as a matrix theta. So this matrix theta is in fact the neural tangent kernel. As you can see in the definition, each element of this matrix is given by an inner product of the output function gradients taken at different input vectors, xi and xj. And what is interesting about the NTK is uh, the results on its infinite width limit, where the widths of all the hidden layers are taken to infinity. The first such result is that the NTK is deterministic under random initialization, where the variances of the initial parameters are scaled by the width of the network. Uh, we can then denote the deterministic version of the NTK as theta star. The second result is that the NTK also stays constant during training, so it's equal to its initial value, theta star. These two results allow us to dramatically simplify the dynamics of neural networks. You can see that the gradient flow equation now is just a matrix ODE with a constant matrix theta star. This equation has an analytical solution, and in fact, it is exactly the same as uh, the dynamics of kernel regression with the kernel given by theta star. So we conclude that infinitely wide deep neural networks evolve as kernel regression. Uh, we saw that uh, neural tangent kernel theory gives us a lot of insight into the behavior of infinitely wide networks. But how much can it tell us about finite ones? Uh, so there are multiple problems here. First of all, if uh, NTK matrix is really constant, it means that no feature learning occurs, which arguably defies the whole purpose of deep learning. Also, in empirical studies, performance of uh, kernel methods that use NTK kernel uh, is different from performance of corresponding neural networks. Uh, and finally, in a special case of real networks with uh, certain initialization parameters, uh, it is proven that infinite depth and width limit of NTK is random, which means that uh, the implications of the NTK theory don't hold. Uh, therefore, it is not clear when NTK theory can be used to, exp uh, to explain behavior of real networks, and we address this question in our work. Uh, 
um, we study RELU and sigmoid networks with uh, different hyperparameters, but we focus specifically on uh, the initialization hyperparameters and network's depth and width. As a result, we identified two phases in the hyperparameter space where the NTK regime does and doesn't hold. We also study variants of the output function of deep neural networks in the NTK regime and discuss what it tells us about generalization of networks. Let me now start presenting our results. Um, recall that the first implication of the NTK theory states that the NTK is deterministic at initialization. Uh, therefore, here we will study randomness of NTK at initialization as a function of our hyperparameters, depth L with M and initialization hyperparameters sigma W and sigma B that are highlighted here. Uh, to do so, we will consider the uh, ratio of the second moment of uh, elements of the empirical NTK to, the squared, uh, to their squared expectation. Uh, in the graphs here, you see the results of our experiments for sigmoid networks. The black air in the black area here, the ratio is uh, close to one, which means that the NTK is close to deterministic. Uh, in all the graphs, you see that for smaller values of sigma w, uh, the networks networks of any depth have deterministic NTK. On the other hand, for larger values of sigma w, only shallow networks have deterministic NTK. Um, now, let us have a look at uh, the same graphs, but for real networks. Here, the boundary between deterministic and random NTK has shifted to the left, but the general picture still looks very similar. Um, let us now turn our attention to the dashed green line that happens to be close to the boundary between random and deterministic NTK in all the graphs that we saw. This boundary, in fact, um, is theoretically computed and uh, has an interpretation of the boundary between uh, vanishing and exploding gradients. Works on signal propagation through deep neural networks derived uh, a variable he that uh, controls propagation of the gradients in a deep network. Uh, here you can see that this variable he depends directly on sigma w and on the activation function phi. It can also depend on the second initialization parameter sigma b through this variable q, this, which can be interpreted as the length of pre-activation in layer L. Based on variable he, we can identify several situations. First, if he is larger than one, it means that gradients explode as they backpropagate through the network. We call it chaotic phase. If he is smaller than one, then the gradients vanish. We call it ordered phase. Uh, initialization in the border between these two phases is often called edge of chaos initialization in the literature. Now let's look at our graphs for RELU and sigmoid networks again. For this network, the boundary given by he equals 1 um, is located at different values of sigma w. However, for uh, both activations, uh, the boundary between random and theoretical NTK is still close to the boundary between vanishing and exploding gradients. So we conclude that deep networks in chaotic phase are random at initialization. We can also have a closer look at the dependence on, of the randomness of the NTK uh, on depth to width ratio, L divided by M. The graphs here show you uh, that in the chaotic phase, uh, for a wide variety of uh, M values, uh, we see exponential growth of uh, the NTK randomness in uh, depth to width ratio. However, we don't have uh, the same situation in the ordered phase. Here, uh, the randomness of the NTK depends rather on 1 divided by m, which is in agreement with the NTK theory. Now let's move to the second implication of the NTK theory, namely that um, the NTK stays constant during training. Uh, to check this one, we will consider the relative change of the NTK norm during training. Um, for sigmoid networks, the boundary between vanishing and exploding gradients depends both on sigma w and sigma b. So here we plot the results uh, in these coordinates. You can see that again, the transition in the NTK behavior uh, follows the boundary closely. In particular, in the ordered phase, um, the NTK norm doesn't change much 
while in the, uh, in the chaotic phase, the NTK changes significantly during training. We can also see that this uh, change is more pronounced for deeper networks. Looking at the same graphs for real networks, we can see that though the boundary uh, looks very different here, the change, uh, the change of the NTK's behavior still follows the boundary between ordered and chaotic phases. So NTK changes significantly during training in the chaotic phase. Uh, now let us move to, uh, to discuss the effects of initialization on the generalization of the networks in the NTK regime. Um, we can use the results of the gradients propagation in uh, infinitely wide neural networks to show that the NTK at the initialization can be, um, uh, can be represented as a sum of data independent matrix where all the diagonal values are equal kappa uh, given by kappa 1 and all the non-diagonal values are given by kappa 2 and also a certain uh, data dependent term which decreases with depth. Uh, the constants kappa 1 and kappa 2 here are actually controlled by the, by the behavior of gradients. If we uh, examine kappa 1 and kappa 2 in ordered and chaotic phases, we, it, it turns out that the ratio between kappa 1 and kappa 2 is uh, much larger than 1 and grows with depth in the chaotic phase, but in the ordered phase uh, it is close to 1 and decreases with depth. Therefore, uh, we expect that deep neural networks in the NTK regime behave differently if they're initialized in either ordered or the chaotic phase. We continue examining this difference by the next theorem. Consider the variance of the output function of a trained neural network. Uh, assume this network evolves according to the NTK theory and also that the NTK matrix is well conditioned. Then the variance of this, uh, of this output can be approximated by the expression shown in the slide. It depends on the variance of the output function at initialization and also the covariance of uh, the output function taken at two different inputs, xi and xj, at initialization. There is also a constant a that depends on the NTK. Uh, this expression may seem complex, but if we consider it separately for chaotic and ordered phases, uh, we can say that in the chaotic phase, the variance is proportional to the variance at initialization, which is large in the chaotic phase. And in the ordered phase, um, the variance is proportional to the difference between initial variance and covariance, which is close to zero in the ordered phase. This suggests uh, poor generalization for chaotic networks and um, good generalization for ordered networks. But when can we really trust these results? So recall that uh, in our experiments, the NTK regime holds only for networks in the ordered phase and shallow networks in the chaotic phase. On the other hand, NTK is well conditioned only for networks in the chaotic phase and shallow networks in the ordered phase. So these two situations intersect only uh, for chaotic, uh, for shallow networks. This suggests that shallow networks have low variance uh, in the ordered phase and how high variance in the chaotic phase. This result is also in good agreement with the empirical results on shallow networks. Now, if we consider uh, deep networks in the chaotic phase, we know that the NTK regime doesn't hold for these networks. Therefore, the NTK is random and changes during training, and we cannot analyze these networks using the NTK theory. Uh, on the other hand, if we consider uh, deep networks in the ordered phase, the NTK is uh, very poorly conditioned here. So small perturbations of the NTK, be they either data dependent or just random, um, affect the output of the model significantly. Thus, it is also hard to analyze these networks in the ATK regime. So we can say that deep networks cannot be analyzed by the NTK theory. Uh, in conclusion, I would like to say that certainly NTK is a powerful tool to analyze deep neural networks theoretically. However, it's important to understand when we can apply it. Uh, in in this work, we uh, determined that empirical NTK behaves as theoretical NTK for deep neural networks in the ordered phase, but not in the chaotic phase. We also showed that generalization of shallow networks can be analyzed within the NTK theory, but generalization of deep networks is hard to analyze within it. Therefore, we think that new approaches are needed to analyze deep neural networks theoretically.
Uh, here is the list of references we, references we used in the presentation, and thank you for your attention.